On today's podcast, I had Ruby Tinoco on. Ruby is a house flipper out of Charleston, South Carolina. She did over a million dollars last year, and she has a really cool story about coming up, um, actually buying a $50,000 coaching program, which she did not have the money for. And uh, it's cool to hear why she took that risk and how she got her husband on board um, with you know, supporting her on that risk. Along the way, um, after that, she obviously became very successful at real estate investing. She talks about the struggles of doing everything herself and what it was like realizing that she needed systems and processes and just learning to build a team on the fly. We also talk about the power of you know, social media. We talk about what it's like being an entrepreneur and doing different side hustles. And uh, I find out that she was actually doing the couch flipping game in a much different way than I was doing it. So uh, you're into any kind of you know, side hustle or entrepreneurial journey or real estate investing, or if your spouse is having a tough time, you know, or you're having a tough time getting your spouse to support you, I think that uh, this podcast is going to be really good for you. So with that being said, let's jump into it. Welcome to the Ryan Pineda Show, where our mission is to invest. I only expect to make money in things that I understand. Innovate. It's about believing in the future and thinking that the future will be better than the past. And inspire. I am much more likely to hit my goal just due to putting it out there. You're now rocking with the best. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of The Ryan Pineda Show. Today, I have got someone who has made over a million dollars last year flipping houses out in Charleston, South Carolina. I don't get many of the Southern people out here, so it's cool to uh, get somebody out. I've got none other than Ruby Tinoco. Did I say that right? Tinoco. <laughs> See. But yeah, Tinoco. Tinoco's fine. <laughs> perfect, perfect. See, I butcher it. So uh, anyways, it's happy to have you out here. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah. yeah, so we actually met at my buddy Tim Bratz's event um, here in Vegas. What was that, like a month ago? Uh, probably. Yeah. Yeah. So if you haven't, uh, seen the episode I did with Tim, he's done over 5,000 rental properties. Him and I have partnered up on an apartment complex as well. And, uh, I ran into Ruby and I think it was, was it Tim's assistant who was saying we had to meet? Yeah. Sarah. Yeah. Sarah. <laughs> yeah. She was like, you got to get Ruby on the show. She's absolutely crushing it. She's like the <laughs> best. And I'm like, okay, bring her Let's on. Do it. <laughs> so, um, I'm curious to hear about your business and, and what you got going on because, uh, you know, you're young, you're doing stuff in a market that uh, I haven't, like, heard a ton of people out of. You know, whenever I get these big flippers on, they're always out of, uh, you know, Cali or Vegas or Phoenix, and I don't hear many uh, Charleston. So Yeah, I'm hiding there. Yeah. Just keeping it up for, for me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No no competition until um, this releases. Right, yeah. <laughs> so tell me about uh, how you got started. Like, what are you, what are you doing out there? Yeah, yeah. So um, I actually started by uh, buying a $50,000 course. Uh, I sold my car uh, to make up the $50,000. When was so this? That was in 2017. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so 2017, by the end of 2017, I literally said, you know what? I don't want to do construction anymore. I don't want to do remodeling. And uh, because that was, you know, I did remodeling for four years. So okay. I started, actually, my first business was remodeling. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I got too tired of it. And I said, I'm not doing this anymore. And by the end of 2017, I decided to close my business. Yeah. And then two weeks after, I started hearing about how to flip houses. And that was when I was like, okay, maybe this is where I have to head. You know, maybe this is my opportunity. Yeah. So I went to the seminar. And in this seminar, uh, they had three different packages, 30000 40000 and 50000 And I went for the $50,000. I only had $30,000 in my bank account. <laughs> and so I ended up selling my car. Yeah. Uh, and then I jumped into real estate. So that was... You were my, just sold. You're like, I, if I'm going to do yeah. this, I don't <laughs> want like, just give me the 50K one. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I mean, obviously, okay, let, let's just, before we even get in your story, let's talk about this because there's a lot of people who try to get into real estate just like you, right? Whether they try and buy my coaching program or anyone else's. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, obviously none of these coaching programs are free. Like, you know, they, they require a lot of time and there's employees and there's, you know, resources on all these things and, um, 
you went to an event and you didn't have the money to yep. buy the program. You found a way to get the money, but like, mm-hmm. what was it like just going through that? What was going on in your head to commit to something that big? Right. Um, I think, you know, now that I think about it, you know, we, every time we make decisions, we have a yes or no, right. And a yes or no decision. And so, uh, and there's always three paths to that, like three roads. One is I want to do it. Should I do it? And then I will do it. Right. So I think my biggest part was in the middle. I wanted to do it. Uh, the first thing that, uh, that sold me was how to flip with no money out of your out of pocket. Right. That was the first thing. Right. Uh, the second thing was, um, uh, you know, basically having that guidance, right? So I was like, okay, I, I want to do this, definitely. Yeah. When I jump into the pricing, I got to the second level where it was, you know, should I do it, you know? Right. And then I think the biggest, you know, the biggest uh, – decision in there was uh because I'm, I'm also married i have a i have my husband and, and two two kids and so that day my uh, that day that you know they gave us the pricing and everything my husband actually told me like ruby do you want to do it mm-hmm. because i was more into it than him yeah and then he was like do you want to do it and i said yeah i, I want to do it and then he said do you think you're going to make it <laughs> you know, like that was like the biggest question. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, like I needed to prove him that I was going to do it no mm-hmm. matter what. And that, that I committed to that word. Right. And then that's when I said, okay, yeah, I, I'm committed. Yes, I would do it. And you know, whatever it takes. Once you had his approval, you were like, yeah, All right. I was like, you know, there's, there's no way back. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, how long have you guys been married for? Uh, Already for 10 years. Oh, okay, so yeah. you guys have been yeah. married a while now. Yeah. And um, what does he do? He does construction. Okay. But actually, he doesn't do any of that in my business. I yeah. kind of like put him aside. <laughs> yeah, he probably can't work for cheap yeah. enough. Yeah. He's like, I'm not doing this for that price. Uh, yeah, especially on flipping houses. Yeah. yeah there's no way. He's yeah. like, I, I'm doing And that was actually, you know, one of the reasons, actually. Yeah. yeah. That was one of the reasons why we stopped working together. I believe it. I yeah. could already foresee the problem. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. He was like, hey, you know, I'm working for free, you know? And I, yeah. Yeah. It's funny because I see um, a lot of couples work together in the business. So my wife and I, um, she doesn't really work in any of my businesses anymore. When we first started, she would help design a couple. And she's like, all right, I don't even want to work with you because you want to do everything cheap and yeah. I want to like make it cool. Right. And I'm like, well, it's not in the budget. And so <laughs> she was like, no, I'm not doing this. And yeah. then, um, she did help me build out my social media channel. So she edited my YouTube videos and stuff for, um, a few months when I got started before she was finally like, okay, dude, like you need to hire someone else because you want to do too many videos and I ain't got time to do this. Right? right. Yeah. So it's just funny, um, hearing him that cause even he's in construction and I've also seen it where, uh, there will be a couple, right? And one of them is a realtor, mm-hmm. right? And they were listing on the houses. And then all of a sudden, they're like, well, we can get somebody else to list the houses for way cheaper, right? right. So like, yeah. why you shouldn't even do that. And then just, yeah. there's yeah. like always this yeah. give and take with couples in real estate. Right, yeah, yeah. And I think I think the biggest the biggest thing to that, it's, it's the construction side, just like you said. I mean, Someone else can list the property. Yes, we're talking about one thousand dollars less, two thousand, you know, less commission, one percent. Yeah. But when it comes to like flipping and remodeling, we're talking about it's a lot of work. T- yeah, ten thousand dollars, you know, five thousand dollars. So yeah, you know, we said no to that, and we kind of like took our own direction. <laughs> yeah. No, I love it. Yeah. So let's talk about spousal support because that mm. is a common objection um, for someone who sells education, and you know. We, we get people who want to be students, right? And right. they'll be like, the majority of them are guys. And so they'll be like, yeah, I, I got to really get my wife on board with doing this. Mm-hmm. Um, you were the opposite. You're trying to get your husband on board with mm-hmm. doing it. But like, I don't know. What do you say to those people that are struggling to get their spouse on board, especially to commit Ooh. so much money towards this thing? Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. I think, I think the biggest thing is, um, is believing in your partner. Yeah. You know, I think that's that's where everything starts. Like you got to believe on that person that you marry because you know, you marry that person. Yeah. So You better I mean, trust you got to yeah, you got to trust that person. You got to believe in them. 
and and you got to support them too yeah you know so um and and actually you know those three things are actually you know uh the key to success to a, a you know a successful marriage yeah. right so um i think you know in my case uh was that he saw how much i wanted them mm-hmm. you know so he was like oh my gosh she's so into it because I, w- I was in the class, I was taking notes. I was like, yes, this is what I want to do. You know, yes, we can make $50,000 in this flip, you know. And I was so motivated to that. Yeah. And and it's all based on, you know, on, on a yes or no decision. So he basically said yes to me. And that is why I'm here. That's yeah. why we are able to make seven figures, you know. Yeah. But imagine if he would have said no, you know. Where yeah. would I be? I mean, I don't know. So I think, you know, when it comes to that support is like, you know how how much can you guys grow together if you support that person yeah. from the beginning? You know, and and what is the outcome going to be? Yeah, you know. No, I agree with you. Like, uh, you know, I've started so many businesses and taken so many big risks. Um, you know, my story was somewhat similar in that you know I wasn't uh, taking out debt to buy the education, but mm-hmm. I had to max out all my credit cards to go buy that first slip. You know, we only had ten thousand bucks, and so um, I took my credit. And her credit. And I said, hey, we need to cash advance and do a balance transfer. And, you know, I need this money for a down payment. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we kind of risk it all. But, you know, she was like, hey, like, I trust you. You're like really into this. I was Mm -hmm. reading about it. I was listening to podcast. And she's like, I trust you. Yeah. And even with all these other businesses or anything else, I'm like, hey, here's what I want to do. I want to do YouTube. I want to do e-commerce. I want to do, you know, a big event. You know, these things. She's like, yeah, that's awesome. Like never once has she been like, yeah, I don't think you're going to succeed in that. Yeah. She's, she's always yeah. supportive. Wow. So yeah. It, it helps for sure. Um, Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I mean, if you're, if you're, uh, if you're supporting that person, if you're believing in that person, if you're trusting that person, then there's no way that, you know, that they're going to fail, you know, because you're putting everything all the trust in that person. So they have some sort of commitment, you know, to succeed. Um, Versus if you said, you know, oh, I don't think you're going to make it. You're already smashing his dreams, you know, or her dreams. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And then 80%, I mean, or maybe, you know, 90%, they won't make it because of they live with you, you know? Yeah, you need need somebody (laughs) to help. You need that support. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that believes in you for sure. Mm -hmm. So you go and buy this program. What happens next? So I, I purchased this program. I started, you know, uh, by wholesaling properties and, uh, you know, $5,000, $10,000 in wholesaling. And then from there, I jumped into my first flip. And uh, I actually started wholesaling because I thought that I needed funds, right? Raise some capital. I'm not raising capital, but build some capital so I can Your do Your own capital. Flip. Yeah. And um, because I was so afraid of, like, talking to people, you know? So I was like, okay. So I just bought this, you know, $50,000 course for $50,000 and that was supposed to teach me, you know, how to flip houses with $0. Yeah. And then three months after you see me like, oh my gosh, like I need to build capital because I need to flip my first property, yeah. you know, because I'm afraid of going out there and putting myself, you know, with private money lenders. So I did uh, wholesaling. I jumped into my first flip and my first flip, I actually didn't use my money. I brought another partner and... Uh, we flipped the house. We made two thousand dollars. We split, you know, the profits. <laughs> uh, so after five to six months of you know flipping energy, putting energy, money, and you know, and time into this flip, we made one thousand dollars. Why? So. What happened? Uh, this you is made what- every mistake <laughs> in the book. But what yeah. what happened? Yeah, and actually, you know, it's funny because I come from remodeling, you yeah. know, and what happened was that we went over budget. Mm. Yeah. By a lot. A lot. Yeah. A lot. It was actually like almost like $50,000. Over budget. Over budget. <laughs> yeah. was the total rehab? <laughs> the total rehab was about like uh, probably close to $100,000. How did you like miss budget it that much yeah. having remodeling experience? Yeah. Yeah. So I think uh, it was because uh, I went with my emotions, yeah. you know, so it was my first flip. I wanted the, the, the flip to look like, like it was... Like, amazing. Like, it was me. You know, I actually flipped the house like if I was moving in. Yeah. Property. As if it was going to be on HGTV. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and and actually, I haven't watched, you know, HGTV, but, you know, I have watched some, some you know, some small episodes. But, you know, 
that was that was my dream was like having this nice flip that I can show off, you know, that I can yeah. you know, brag about, right? And then on the other side, I went fifty thousand dollars over budget, <laughs> and that was our profit. Yeah, you know, and um, so we ended up putting like. You know, uh, everything was, you know, we made so many, like, wrong mis- decisions. So we ended up going with, like, metal roof instead of shingles. Yeah. And everyone ha- uh, everyone else had shingles. Yeah. And the reason why, because we thought that it was going to appraise for more. Yeah. You know? Uh, we ended up buying, like, high-end appliances, mm-hmm. um, even uh, bamboo floors. Oh, man. What you know, the who, heck? Puts, who puts bamboo <laughs> floors in, you know, in their first flip? I've never heard of that. All right. Yeah. So, and uh, we did that, um, uh, uh, you know, very expensive uh, quartz, you know, versus granite. Yep. And uh, so, yeah, everything, you know, everything was really fancy, you know, rain shower. And and I can. Whoever you know, got this house <laughs> got a steal, though. Oh, yes, they did. They did. Yeah. They absolutely did. Yeah. <laughs> they, they actually offered $50,000 more than what we put it in the market. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. We went, you know, half and half in, in there. Uh, we negotiated the price, but we put it really high. We started, you know, going down until, like, someone offered us $50,000, you know, less. Yeah. And then we were like, okay, you know, let's negotiate here and let's get rid of it. Yeah, yeah. for sure. If you're listening to this podcast, then my guess is you're interested in real estate investing. Some of you are just starting out while others are trying to scale their business to the next level. But the problem is with so much information out there, most people don't know which program or coach to trust. Well, I'm a bit biased, but I believe my company, Future Flipper, can help you get to the next level. We've coached thousands of students from all over the world on how to build their real estate investing business. It doesn't matter whether you want to flip, wholesale, or buy rentals. Our coaching program has everything you need to become a great investor. There are many things that we include with coaching, but to give you a few examples, you're gonna get an accountability coach. These are people that have had success in their own business and they wanna make sure that you achieve success in yours. We also have all of our documents, our systems and processes that I've used to buy hundreds of homes. You can copy and paste them directly into your own business. And we have events where you get to meet me, top level guest speakers and other students who are crushing it. My students do deals with each other and I personally do deals with them too. In fact, at a recent event, I just honored over 20 people in our program that made over a million dollars in the last year. So if you want to grow your real estate business, head over to futureflipper.com and apply for a call with our team. The call is completely free and they can help point you in the right direction whether you work with us or not. So go to futureflipper.com and book your call today. For the last year, the real estate market has been on absolute fire. Prices are at all-time highs, interest rates are at all-time lows, and there is more money in the economy than ever. But with so much competition, many investors are sitting on cash, struggling to find great deals. If this sounds like you, then you need to invest with Pineda Capital. With my network and social media following, we get access to the best real estate deals all over the country. And if you're an accredited investor, you can invest with me on those deals. In fact, last year, we purchased a 334-unit apartment complex in Georgia for almost $20 million. We expect it to be worth well over $30 million when it's all said and done. Our goal with each deal is to build in so much equity from the beginning that we're able to refinance our investors' cash out and own the properties together with little to no money into the deal. And the best part is, you don't have to do anything. Our team will find the deals, handle the renovations, get them leased, and eventually refinanced or sold. All you have to do is provide the capital. So if you want exclusive access to our deals before they hit the public, go to PinedaCapital.com to schedule a call. We can put your money to work today to start getting you great returns. So go to PinedaCapital.com now to get access to our deals. So obviously you learned from that. You're like, okay, you can't do that again. Yeah. How does it progress from there? Yeah, so from there, you know, obviously... Uh, I learned how not to flip a house, and <laughs> uh, and I started to uh, uh, flip more properties. So in the last, you know, in, in that, those first six months, we flipped about thirty properties, and um, but I also noticed, you know, in that you first year, thirty houses. Yeah, in the first, in the following year, the following year okay. after, you know, that first year of of learning, yeah, of learning and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's that's still crazy, like to go from making a thousand dollars on a mm-hmm. flip to go into 30 the next year. Yeah. And I'll tell you why. <laughs> what happened? So I actually hired two people 
and uh, and they take they you know I hired I was like okay I'm not going anywhere by myself because okay. I'm doing every single thing yeah uh, you know doing mailers talking knocking doors negotiating you know meeting with sellers and then doing the flipping side and too project and wholesaling management. project management Lowe's Home Depot you know everything holy cow All yeah right. and so I was like okay uh, I need a team I need help so I hired two people. Okay. And uh, and they started to help me with like the acquisitions part and all that kind of stuff. And then they were doing a little bit of everything, you know. So uh, having this team helped me to increase, you know, our our uh, our purchases and, and flipping and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, I was still doing every single thing. So I was, you know, the only difference was that I was doing it with them. I still needed to be there. I was still, you know, designing. I was still. Uh, yeah. You weren't willing, you weren't ready to let them do it themselves. Uh, yeah. And, and I think the biggest mistake was not having systems in place. So yeah. I hired first without having systems. So when I hired them, they, they were calling me like every single day, asking yeah. me questions, you know? Um, yeah. Got it. So either way though, I mean, that second year, you're still working a lot, obviously, but now you've got some help. Yeah. Um, what'd you guys end up making on those 30 deals? Um, <laughs> that's funny. Cause on some deals, we actually made like, you know, $15,000, even in one, like $8,000. Other ones, you know, $25,000, yeah. So it was like, you know, uh, a little bit of everything there. Um, and, and that was because, you know, we had, we could have, we could have had a, the, a, the best year ever with those 30 properties, you know, but because I was too busy doing something, they were making mistakes on the other side too. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But that was our average was probably like, 18000 or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And that's still a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. yeah especially for your second yeah. year flipping. I mean, that's over half a million dollars. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. insane. Way more than I made my second year. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was, it was definitely, you know, a great year. Um, a lot of learned lessons. Uh, from that, I learned that, uh, you know, I, my biggest takeaway was like, I need systems somehow. Yeah. I can't be flipping houses and just, you know, not assigning, uh, roles right instead of just tasks so yeah. everyone in there was based on task got you know, it go do this go do that and then kind of like a to-do list and that was then you're you're making it. a to-do list every day for yeah. them. like hey here's what i need you to do yeah. today instead of them yeah coming to work they know exactly what they mm -hmm. got to do yeah. yeah yeah so when did you figure that piece out um after the 30 flips yeah the next yeah. year no actually that same year okay yeah so it's like in the mid of that year i was like there's no way yeah. There's no way. I'm spending so much time, energy. Um, I can barely be with my family. You know, I can, I'm at church. They're calling me. I'm at, you know, uh, dinner with my husband. And, you know, they're calling me like, hey, we have a, something that it's a potential deal. Like, what should, what do we do next? You yeah. know, like, or how do, we, how do I negotiate this? You know, they're asking, you know, 5,000 more. Than, it was just a lot. And uh, that's when I said, you know what, I'm going to spend my evenings and even if I have to stay awake like all night, I need to figure it out how. So I started to like, you know, just dig into systems and, uh, uh, and just learning, you know, from from other people, like how to build systems and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And um, and I actually went to a systems academy, um, uh, you know, one of the courses that I purchased previously. And uh, and when I went to the systems academy, the, the information was great, but I was waiting for that moment where they take you behind their screen, you know, and they show you like, this is the systems, you know, that we use, you know, like the unicorn, you know, like uh -huh. show it, show me, you know, what's, what's behind the, the, the screens. And I didn't, I didn't got that. Uh -huh. So I was really like upset. I was like, okay, so yes, they, they show me, you know, uh, transaction coordinator part, you know, project management, like all that kind of stuff, you know, how building a team in, in, you know, in, and the steps to do that and all that kind of stuff. But I want to know, like, what the processes are. You know, I want to know, like, what KPIs do you use? I want to know, like, the, de the, the details, super yes, stuff. that, that, that is going to help me improve. So I didn't get that. So I said, okay, well, I'm going to create my own. There you go. Yeah. And I, you know, I, for about probably, you know, three months or so, I, I dig into it. And I was, you know, even going to sleep around 5, 4 a.m., Mm -hmm. You know, just to like test it, test it, test it for my team to test it the next day. Wow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to do what it takes. 
Yeah, yeah. And I and honestly, like to be honest with you, if I you know if I would have find someone right who would say, you know what, pay me twenty thousand dollars, forty thousand dollars, like here you go. You'd have been like, all right. Yeah, here. I mean, I already paid fifty thousand dollars. Like, yeah. you know, <laughs> and this made, is nothing. It, yeah, this is nothing. Yeah, I, I, I'll, I've definitely done it. You know, but there's a lot of you know entrepreneurs that they are already too busy. You know, doing their sleeping or you know they have multiple businesses like yourself. You know, and uh, and you know they don't have time for that. You know, yeah. like they're they're not you know selling like their experience. Right. You know? Hundred yeah. percent. Mm-hmm. So, what does the team look like today? Yeah. So the team is two people, transaction coordinator and project manager. Got it. And then we have um, uh, an external team. I call it external team because they're at our payroll. Uh-huh. And uh, most of our uh, acquisition comes from real estate agents. Got it. So 80% from MLS, probably now a little bit less, like 70% from MLS, and then the other 30%, 20% uh, off market. And it's our real estate agents that bring the properties off market or through the MLS. So we have our transaction coordinator and then our project manager. Mm-hmm. And transaction coordinator handles, you know, obviously the buying and selling transaction and project manager, all the renovation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So majority of it is just realtor prospecting. So are you doing any kind of direct marketing yourself? No. So in the last 18 months, we haven't done like any actually marketing campaigns. That's awesome. Yeah. So just pure net profit, you know, don't have to deal with uh, marketing budgets or sales team or yeah. anything like that. I can tell you, you know, when people come to me and they say they want to start flipping houses or wholesaling Mm. I'm always like okay you know there's multiple ways to do this and they're like okay well I want to start texting or doing direct mail or cold calling I'm like okay but just know that if you do want to go that route you're starting a whole separate company right the (laughs) the marketing company is totally separate from the flipping company and um you know if you're able the approach you're taking is is far easier. Just network, build relationships, just focus on <laughs> getting these flips done. Mm-hmm. It's way easier. You don't have any marketing budget. You know, it's less headache. But, you know, in order to scale to, you know, really big levels, at some point you're going to need to have your own marketing division, your own sales team. And even if your sales team is, you know, out there trying to meet realtors and meet wholesalers, you know, talk to homeowners. I mean, you talked about how, you were at the beginning door knocking and like mm-hmm. doing these things. Yeah. So yeah. you can always do any of these forms of marketing. It's just a matter of uh, <laughs> what you want to hire for. Right. And spend yeah. your own time for. Yeah. And it's and just what you said. I mean, it's a whole different business, you know, marketing. Yeah. It's, 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 it's a, I actually had my, um, before I started working with agents and, you know, recruiting agents and all that kind of stuff. Um, I had my, I actually built another business, um, a side business that was doing all the acquisition, the marketing, and, you know, that's how we were getting our properties. And uh, we had like six VAs, uh, you know, and like four or three people in our office. But one day I literally like walk in and I was like, oh my gosh, like my flipping business is already, is already running by itself. I have a transaction coordinator, project management. And then on the other side, I'm still... I still have to be in my office from Monday through Saturday, you know, coaching my team. Yeah. How many leads do we got? How many, you know, and, and blah, blah, blah. So got to the point where I said, you know what? I think I need to find a smarter way to do it. And that's when I started with uh, real estate agents, recruiting agents, uh, uh, qualifying them, setting a pay structure for them, and then training them. Right. So that's how, you know, we're successfully, like, being able to get over 10 properties, you know, quarterly just by – leveraging wholesalers i'm sorry uh wholesalers, real estate agents. agents yeah yeah and and also wholesalers too so we have a cool program with wholesalers too yeah uh that you know that keeps us from you know uh winning our competition you know by partnering up with with uh wholesalers nice yeah. that's super cool so you know you you got this system built out now like what does your day-to-day look like so um yeah so you know obviously you know a a relief, right? Yeah. <laughs> from from having to be, you know, walking at Lowe's, Home Depot, and doing all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um. So right now, my uh, day to day, it's basically focusing more in, uh, in improving our coaching program because we have a coaching program that you know it's it's doing amazing. So I'm doing that, and then I'm also focusing in uh, investing in other things like land, and uh, that's that's a Something that I, you know, last year I was very intrigued by. Mm. Uh, and, uh, and so that's kind of like what I'm doing more right now, focusing on land. 
And um, and also on the other side, you know, fi- finding other sources of like income as well, like, you know, passively investing into multifamily. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause I mean, we met at uh, Tim's. So, you know, his whole event is about multifamily and commercial real estate. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you're talking about land and multifam. Like, what, what are you trying to do with land? Um, so with land, you know, uh, you know, I think uh, land always goes up on price, you know, and uh, I just feel good about land. Just you know, uh, buying you know some land and then subdividing and selling it, you know, uh, forty, fifty acres. But you don't want to. Yeah. You don't want to actually develop it. No, not develop. You just want to hold it. Just, just Piggy hold bank. it. Yeah, hold it. You know, keep some, uh, some land and also, um, there's some you know, very you know, nice areas where they're actually selling you know for double the amount you know as long as you repair it right and yeah 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 so. if you can get land that's already developed and yeah. ready to go for a builder mm-hmm. they'll pay you a premium yeah so that's that's what you i'm saving a year it. yeah yeah that's yeah true. Mm-hmm. i know a lot of people who um do that type of land deals i mean i've thought about doing it as well uh you know you can provide you know permits and you can provide even drawings and different mm-hmm. things like there's a lot you can do to like give land value without having to actually develop it right so. yeah yeah so i'm i mean i actually have one under contract right now well actually i'm signing the contract today nice yeah. how much yeah. is it Two hundred and fifty thousand. uh 250 acres 250 acres yeah. how much does that cost uh 450 that's crazy yeah <laughs> just, it's yeah. just like these <laughs> prices where's this at yeah it's missouri oh yeah. And what are you going to do with it? What's the plan? Uh, well, you know, I have some uh, partners that they're going to be uh, subdividing and sh- uh, selling them from chunks. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then on the multifam side, what are you trying to do? Uh, passively investing. Uh, you know, I, with the cash coming from the flipping side, you know, we have to deploy some money into, like, passively investing. So that's one thing. And then I, I also... Uh, I'm partnering up with some other guys on raising capital for them. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't see myself, honestly, like I don't see myself operating, you know, a uh, multifamily. I just see myself more like, you know, passively investing and raising capital and yeah. Got to get those tax write offs. Yeah. 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 So tell me about uh, just like with so much going on, um, you said you were thinking about other side businesses and things too. I mean, obviously uh, you're an entrepreneur at heart. Uh, How do you balance everything else? Like you mentioned church. I talk a lot about faith on this podcast. Um, You mentioned family. Mm -hmm. Like how do you make time for all of it? Yeah. So I think, you know, um, and actually I've been thinking about this, you know, uh, very often too. Uh, It's, you know, setting up your priorities, you know, like, regardless of whatever you do during the day, during the week, the year, right? Like what are your priorities? And, and the priorities are God, you know, and family, mm-hmm. like everything else can fall down. Yeah. You know, but if those things fall before that, yeah, then, you know, I know that there's, you know, there's, uh, there's way bigger uh, yeah. problems. Yeah. Way more, you know? So I think, um, one of the things that actually my dad taught me when I was a kid was put God first, no matter what. Yeah. You know, so I think that, you know, if I, uh, if I, and this is what I've been doing, actually my first business, my, you know, my construction business, the first day that I thought about making a business, I put myself on my knees and I prayed to God and I said, you know what, here I come, you know, and I put everything in your hands and I want to do it just, you know, as you know as as what you want me to do you know right and i think that's where where everything starts you know setting up your priorities so my priority is one i know that if i have faith and if i believe in god he's always going to be with me no matter what yep and then from there is what falls behind that is our family right so um every single single day like for example me i learn how to work only 7 hours per per day yeah Versus 12 or 18 hours, you right. know, and that was something that that I didn't uh, do for two two full years. And actually, when I have my construction business, was well, six years. You're just grinding for yeah. I was like eight I, years. Yeah, eight years, and then and then I have a six year old, you know, in a in a ten year old. I mean, 
your 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 kids are not going to be babies all the time, right? You know, and that is I, I know a lot of people talk about sacrificing, you know, uh, you know th- they got to go through the sacrifice part, you know, so they can also gain, right, and all kind of stuff. But honestly, I feel like when it comes to family, it's like I'm not going to sacrifice my family. I'm going to sacrifice myself. Yeah. And how do I do that? Is if I need to work from 8 a.m. to let's say 4 p.m. and dedicate, you know, so those five hours to my children, great. And how am I going to sacrifice, you know, myself is working overnight, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and, and, and that's, You're you going to work through dinner time I'm not, and all that. Yeah. I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. And, and, and I learned it, you know, maybe a little bit late, right? <laughs> but, but now I feel like, you know what, uh, that's my priority. Yeah. Yeah. That I'm was, not going to, um, yeah. I don't know. Were you at my presentation for Tim? Um, yes. So, yes. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of like the whole premise of, um, you know, what I was speaking about at that event with the wealthy way and everything else was mm-hmm. like, man, you guys have got to learn how to prioritize your time. Yeah. And it's funny you mentioned it like, you know, all those years in construction and even the first, you know, couple of years of flipping, like you didn't make that much. You're making far more now balancing it out and sp- like working less. Yes. <laughs> and that was the revelation I had too, that like I just keep like trying to tell people, I'm like, look, I literally work less now than I did, you know, when I was making less, right? So like what what is actually happening? Why am I somehow making more while working less? Mm-hmm. It's not something that I think is unique to me because I've seen it happen for people like you and other people as well, where it's like, once you start really figuring out how to use your time the most efficient way and you start getting your priorities correct where, you know, you're pursuing God first and you're pursuing your family, you're pursuing your health, you're pursuing, Mm -hmm. you know, self-development. And yeah, work is a part of that. Um, But, you know, it's like people make work like the number one end all be all their career success, their success on social media, their success Mm -hmm. on, you know, how many house flips they can do. Um, and it is just like the whole point of my presentation was uh, you will do better once you stop making that a priority and like right. your identity. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's true. Once you start like putting the puzzle together, you know, and figuring out like what's, it's just like when you make a to-do list, yeah. right? All the priorities go on the top and then whatever is not so important go on the bottom. You outsource that and then you can still keep in that, you know, priority. Yeah. So for me it's those two things and then everything else can fall under that yeah you know as the world starts to go more digital you need to be aware of which businesses are going to thrive in the future one of the obvious ones is e-commerce in fact last year e-commerce sales did over four trillion dollars globally and it's continuing to grow now if you're like most people you probably don't have time to learn a whole new industry and start a new business but there is another way you could partner with us at lunar ecom We have over 300 e-commerce stores that we have created and managed for our clients. And the best part is it's completely passive on their end. The business model is very simple. You cover the cost of creating and running the store. We handle everything else. We pick the products, we handle fulfillment, returns, and customer satisfaction. After all that, we split profits at the end of the month. This means that when you win, we win. If you wanna learn more about how it works, you can watch our case study at lunarecom.com. I believe that the e-commerce space is going to continue to explode as the world goes digital. So make sure you're with the right partner who's going to be ahead of those trends. So go schedule a call with my team today at LunarEcom.com if you want to learn about how we can start taking your passive income to the moon. Most people want to get rich at all costs. They make sacrifices with their family, their health, and their faith all in the pursuit of money without even realizing it. But what if I told you it doesn't have to be that way? What if you could grow your wealth in all areas of life? Well, it's possible, and that's why I created The Wealthy Way. It's a community of people striving to grow together in all areas. And we have multiple tools for you to use that are completely free. 
You can get access to the Wealthy Way Planner where you can set goals and hold yourself accountable on a daily basis. We also have our Wealth Builder Academy, which is over four hours of content teaching you how to manage your time, create the right goals, and all the biggest secrets I've used to grow my life, not only in my net worth, but in all aspects. Lastly, we have our Discord community where thousands of wealth builders are all over the world encouraging one another and growing together. And once again, all of this is completely free. There are no upsells, there are no hidden catches. For me, this is a passion project and I want to build a community of like-minded people. So if you want to start living the wealthy way today, go to wealthyway.com. There you can get all the free resources like the course, planner, and Discord community. So go to wealthyway.com. I'm curious, like, so for me, especially at Future Flipper, um, obviously we teach people how to flip houses and wholesale and buy rentals and, you know, the everything to do with real estate investing. Mm-hmm. But I think what draws people to the program is they see my life um, on social media because I, I show it a lot on Instagram and everything else, like behind the scenes on stories and stuff. And they're like, yeah, like I ask my sales team, I go, why, why are they buying? Like, what, tell me, get the feedback on why they choose to go with us versus someone else. And they're like, well, they all kind of say the same thing. They really like how you've built a business that's revolved around a lifestyle that's different, right? Like, you know, there are a lot of programs out there that are like, let's scale, let's get big, let's do, and I'm, I never say that. I'm like, yo, to me, it's way better if you can just have a business that's, you know, able to function really well, you know, with the most limited amount of time from you. Even if you mm-hmm. don't make a million bucks, it's okay. Like, yeah. Yeah. It, I would rather do that than grind for a million bucks. Yeah. Um, and so I think a lot of people join for not to flip houses. Flipping houses is just a tool to get like the lifestyle that they mm-hmm. want. Yeah. Um, so I think that's why a lot of them join. I think also a lot of them join because they want to learn about social media and building a personal brand. But I'm curious for you, you know, you've got a coaching program. What have you seen why people choose to join your program? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. And I think, you know, um, you know, the, the biggest reason is, and actually, um, because before they join the program, we qualify them too. Yeah. You know, we want to make sure that it's the right fit for them. And because we don't want to, you know, bring them on board and, and it's not going to help them. That's one thing. And then the other is that uh, what level are they in? You know, and so, so when it when it comes to that, uh, when we go through the qualification process, one of the biggest things is um, they're they're wearing all hats, you know. Right. And people that that, that joins the program, what what catch their attention is um, systems, it's putting systems in place and delegating. Right. Those are the two things, um, and they have also uh, most of them have flipped an average of like five years and they're still doing every single thing and they're solopreneurs. Like they're doing everything by themselves. Right. So that's like, you know, uh, the biggest part for them is finding the right systems and then, uh, and find, find the systems and, and procedures obviously. But I think the biggest thing is what you said, seeing me in social media, you know, yeah. like seeing you that, Oh wait, she's there now. And now she's here. And how is she's, running this other business, you know? So I think most of the people that, you know, join is also by watching you and seeing, like, what are you doing? And then on the other side, you know, how is your business going? You yeah. Know? Yeah, and, you know, I ask that to prove a point to everyone listening. Like, no matter what business you're in, whether you're selling um, education, whether you're flipping houses, whether you are doing some e or, you know, I don't care what you sell. Whatever your business is, understand that, you do sell a product, whatever that is, okay? Mm-hmm. Your product could be this beautiful first house flip that made you a thousand bucks, okay? It could be uh, the best education program ever. Um, whatever it is, though, that's just like the means to an end. Mm-hmm. You have to understand what your customer is actually wanting by buying your product, yeah. you know? So it's like, why, yeah. did, why does my wife buy the Chanel bag? You know, it's yeah. like... <laughs> uh, well, you know, it, yeah, the bag itself is it's pretty nice <laughs> and it looks good and I don't know why it costs so much, but mm-hmm. you know, whatever. Yeah. The reason she buys it is because of whatever that bag brings her. Maybe it makes her feel good. Yeah, maybe, pleasure or pain. Yeah, maybe yeah. it helps uh her status or mm-hmm. her friends like, you know, she knows people yeah. are going to like it and 
I don't know why she buys them, but I, I do know that um, Chanel knows why people buy them. Yeah, yeah. And it's probably not have anything to do with the, the quality of their leather yeah. or how good the pocket is. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's important. You know, it's basically uh, that's how you build your offer, you know, uh, from, you know, what, what, what's the need? So for me, like, you know, when I was starting uh, to create in, when I started to create this first course, I was like, okay, who, I mean, I, I thought about myself. Like, what am I doing right now? Where do I want to be? I'm sorry, where I was and where I am now and what was that process? And I, I, I you know, I was like, okay, wait. And actually, before, you know, building my, my, uh, my coaching program, I was like, what, you know, what are, what are the pains that I'm having right now? Yeah. And when I had my, my team, the pain was systems and procedures. Yeah. You know, th- those, those were the, f- the, the first things. And now, it, you know, when I go back and look into the people that want to join the program, it's like the same thing. Systems, procedures, building a team. Yeah. You know, those are the two things. Because there's, there's a difference between systems, you know, and, and, uh, and KPIs and, you know, CRMs and all that kind of stuff. Like systems are basically what's going to give you the results over and over again. Right. You know, so how are you flipping houses consistently? Yeah. That's the point. You know, not not once in a while, but how are you flipping houses consistently and still being able to average, you know, your profit every month or every quarterly or monthly? Yeah. And uh, and I think that's that's what's catchy for them. Yeah. yeah. You know what's interesting? Um for anyone listening and you're thinking about I don't even know where to start with systems and processes and other stuff. Um what I have realized to this point, we've created so many SOPs and um, just so many because we have so many businesses and so (laughs) many roles and we have like, I don't even know, 50, 60 employees plus Mm -hmm. all the realtors and contract, like it's huge. And I realized that on everything that I was doing, like the very first person I hired was a project manager because I realized I was like, I am so tired of checking in on these stupid contractors every day you know they want a check on this day i never know when they want a check Mm -hmm. they do all these things and so i was like what if that didn't have to happen like what if they all got a check on the same day Mm -hmm. it's developing a process what if they all had to come to me instead of me going to their house exactly you know like and so you start to realize your own pain points and you're like what annoys you so much that you know you got to think of a way to solve it permanently because most people they're like this is such an annoying part of the business Mm -hmm. And they're like, but it just is what it is. And, right. And it's like, yeah. no, it's no, not. You it's can not. make it painless. Well, as as painless as it can possibly be right. by creating a process. And so, um, like another one was when I first started, you know, the contractors would go to Home Depot and we used to do we would pay for materials, they would do labor, right? Mm-hmm. And I soon learned that's obviously not scalable. Um, because you know, when you got, we got 60 flips going on right yeah. now. <laughs> There's a lot. Yeah. And, uh, but what would happen is they would go to Home Depot, right? Home Depot would call me and they'd say, Hey, you know, so-and-so is here. Do you want to approve the order? And I'm like, yes. And then I would give them my credit card over mm-hmm. the phone. And I did that multiple times a day. Yeah. These guys would call me at six in the morning yeah. and I would have to pick <laughs> up the phone. I just remember they're sitting one day. I'm like, why am I doing this? And then, yeah. You know, it was like baby steps. So the next one was Home Depot goes, hey, I've talked to you many times. Did you know that we can actually text you um, and all you have to do is press one or yes or something and uh, it'll approve the transaction. Yeah. And I was like, no (laughs) way. And so I started getting this text and then boom, they didn't do it. And I'm just like, approve, approve. It was like a thousand times easier. But even that got annoying because I'm like, why do I have to text? Like these guys should be able to buy stuff without me having to babysit them. And so- it, it was all an evolution of being annoyed to creating this. And so, mm-hmm. like, everything I've done to my in my life, it just keeps becoming that way even more efficient. Like, uh, for example, when I started getting successful at flipping houses, um, everybody, just like you, was like, can you teach me how? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I don't want to teach people. Like, I'm busy <laughs> trying to go do my own thing. Right. But I got so tired of answering it that I literally wrote a book. I was so tired of it. So I wrote my mm. first book. Uh, flip your future. And I had no des- desire to do coaching or courses or anything. I was just like, here's the book, read the yeah. book. And that's it. I'll never have to answer it again. <laughs> and it, it saved me a lot of headache. And yeah. so um, the reason I share those examples is if 
you are listening and you have a business and you have these things that repeatedly annoy you mm-hmm. day in and day out, um, there's a way to systematize it. Yeah. And it could be as simple as what I'm talking about where you create a document or a product or a mm-hmm. procedure that solves it yeah. so you never have to do it again. Or it could mean you need to hire someone to yeah. go do that because you shouldn't be doing it. Yeah. And if you're doing more than three, four, or five flips right now, you're, it's time. Yeah, you, you, know? you you've got the you know experience yeah. and the capital and all that to yeah, do it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that's that's and I think that's that's where everything comes from. You know, you get annoyed and then from there it's like okay, I need to go and do something about it. Yeah. You know, it's just like you know making a, a decision like you know maybe someone wants to start flipping houses. Why? Because they have a financial you know situation where they got tired of it. You yeah. know, maybe they're W two whatever whatever that is. Well, mine mine has gone to the extreme of like. You know, it used to be little things like that, but then it became actual businesses. So, like, <laughs> I was getting annoyed with CPAs. I'd gone through multiple CPAs, and finally, yeah, I found, <laughs> I found my guy. I was like, and everyone's like, "Who's your CPA?" You know, blah blah blah. I'm yeah. like, I'm getting so annoyed. Like, I've been so annoyed by CPAs. I am just going to start the company. And wow. so, I was surprised <laughs> with that because when you when we walk in here, you were like, "Oh, and that's the CPA," you know. And I was like, "Oh, okay." Yeah. Yeah. That, so we we've got hundreds cool. of. Uh, investors all over the country because it, it was just a big problem. I'm like, yeah. I'm tired of this. I'm just going to do it myself. And so it's good. The CPA business is cool. Um, and I'm, like, sure, I'm sure it's pretty, pretty sweet out there. Yeah. You no, know, it, better than- yeah. And it makes it easy for me because yeah. uh, I got access to them 24 seven. Yeah. Um, but like the big one I'm working on now is my NFT. And, uh, actually by the time this is released, uh, you guys will know about it. So actually, uh, like long story short, you know, I'm super into NFTs and um own a bunch and super like I think crypto and NFTs are taking over. Yeah. Um I actually talked about this at Tim's event too. And uh the number one question I get whenever I start talking about it is like, dude, where can I learn more about this? Like yeah. what what do I go to? I'm like, well, uh the thing is it doesn't exist. Like I'm kind of like the only <laughs> real estate guy talking about it, like, yeah. you know, yeah. and talking about what's gonna happen. And I was like, you know what? This is another product because I'm tired of yeah. like having to answer this over and over yeah, again. Yeah, so, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, my NFT is going to be real estate based. It's real estate community based, and there's like I'm downplaying it. There's way more things that are going to be included with it. But um, yeah. for those of you who want to learn more, uh, you can go to digitycoons.io. D i g i tycoons.io. So that's amazing. Yeah. I just get I get annoyed yeah. easy. That's the thing. Yeah, and, and I mean, and, and so I, for you, it seems like that's that's where you need to be in order to go and build, yeah. you know, another business. Yeah. Yeah. Just, if I see a constant problem that annoys me, I'm like, whatever. Let's solve it. I'll solve it. No one else yeah. is going to do this. I'll do it. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, you know, you just put it some time and energy and focus on that one thing and yeah, and then it runs. Yeah, yeah. so you're, um, you said you're working on a side business. What else are you going to do? Um, so right now, you know, that's actually, I was thinking about, you know, um, I just, you know, it's, it's a lot, a lot of things that, you know, that I've been thinking over and over, but it's more like I need to, I need to set up my priorities, you know, on, on, on the business side. Right. So right now my priority, it's, uh, the coaching program that I have. Yep. And, uh, and then from, from that on the side, I'm doing, you know, the land and then and then investing and raising capital for, you know, um, uh, for operators and, and that's it, you know, for now that that's, that's pretty much it. Okay. So everything's just real estate based. Yeah. Real estate based. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'll probably need some coaching from you for (laughs) crypto and all those, you know, yeah, I just, uh, you know, social media. (laughs) I never thought, uh, I actually, I, I hated real estate going into it. Um, I've always been an entrepreneur at heart, whether I was like flipping stuff on Craigslist and couches. Yeah. And, I, I heard know. that. Yeah. And you know what? I actually, I, I was laughing about, you know, because uh, I think I saw a video of you and your wife talking about that, um, yeah. flipping couches. Yeah. And um, and my husband was with me at that time, uh, you know, looking at, we were just scrolling and then yeah. we saw you guys and, um, and, and we saw that we were like laughing because we also had like a side you know, uh, business like that, not, not like that, but similar. Yeah. So, uh, he was, you know, we, what we used to do was like, if we saw something in crisis, like a dishwasher mm-hmm. or a, 
you know, uh, you know, washing machine or whatever, whatever it was, like any electronics. We used to say, we used to uh, post it in Facebook, you know, uh, like the buy and sell groups. Yep. Without buying the product. You'd be wholesaling it. Wholesaling it. Yeah, That's kind of so like what, what, you, you did something similar to that, right? Or well, I would flip it. I'd actually buy it. Okay, you, you know? flip it. I was yeah. wholesaling. Yeah. And then <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was funny. wholesaling uh, electronics in, in Chrysler's. And so, you know, maybe it was like $50,000. I'm sorry, $50. And then yep. we put it for, you know, $75 or 100 And then we, someone buy it. And I was like, okay, now let's go buy it. Yeah, you, you know, buy and it then. then And then we did that transaction. Um, the funny thing is, you know, we made actually we made some good money doing that. We yeah. did it for about like six months. Yeah. And then after that, uh, someone catch us, and that's where like everything fall down. <laughs> so uh, the 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 story is, uh, we put I think it was a um, in I think it was maybe like a refrigerator that we you know that we said yes we want this and we're gonna come pick it up you know tonight. Yeah. And then we put it on the other page. Yeah. You know like. Refrigerator for Here's 150. The price. Here's yeah. the price. Yeah. And then someone put the same refrigerator with the, you know, with lower price than, our, than ours. Same pictures. Yeah. Because yeah. we were using the same pictures. Yeah, yeah. And then we were like, oh my gosh, you know? And then, and then he was like, oh, you know, sold. When we called the other guy, it was sold. You know, yeah. like we're like, oh, we thought we were coming, you know, and everything. He was like, oh yeah, someone else came earlier than you. Yeah. And then we start seeing this other competition, you know, doing <laughs> the same thing. And then that's kind of like we were like, okay, I'm done with this, you know, I'm not, that's I'm not funny. doing it any, any anymore. But yeah, it's just you know, uh, sometimes you know, it's you gotta end it up well, you know, somehow. Yeah, you know? you know, it's funny. It's like so, I was doing that, and you know, I was like the, the one man band and just figuring it out, and uh, it wasn't a thing. Nobody's talking about it on YouTube like they are today. Um, and it was great, but I, you know, I was buying them, so I didn't have to worry about that. You know, I just stored everything in storage units, and it was like a full-on business. And through that process, though, I learned so many things like negotiating, sales, oh, marketing, yes. all yes. that stuff, lowballing. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest one. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I made so many <laughs> offers every day. So when I got into real estate, I'm like, give you ten bucks for your house. No, it wouldn't be that much. But like, I, I didn't yeah. care about lowballing. Like I was yeah, so used yeah. to it. Yeah. And uh, eventually. You know, I, I did that and I developed skills. And um, when I went to flipping, it was just like, yeah, I'm doing the same thing. It's just a house, like mm -hmm. it's just bigger stakes, right? And I never considered myself like only a real estate investor. I'm like, I just go where the wind flows. Like what, whatever I think is like the opportunity at that time, I'm going. And so mm -hmm. with, with social media, I never thought I'd be this guy on camera. I was just like, I think this is a huge opportunity. Um, yeah. When I got into e -com, it reminded me so much of the couch flipping days because I'm like, literally, mm -hmm. all you do with drop shipping is just you find a product that's cheap, right? You resell it for more on a different platform. Yeah. It is literally the same thing. But now, you know, it's mm -hmm. there's millions of products to choose from. Yes. And you can sell them at scale. You don't need to find just that one dishwasher. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's true. And that's you know that now that's our competition. You know, I mean, I mean, if that would have been you know back on the days, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that would have killed our our business because now mm -hmm. we have you know like so many products out there, different prices, and yeah, that that would have definitely killed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's cool to hear your story. I think um, it's super encouraging for everyone who um, is maybe scared to jump into a coaching program or scared to you know they don't really have their spouse's support and yeah. Um, you know, if you're somebody listening to this and uh, you're trying to get your spouse on board, uh, send them this podcast and, and yeah. have them listen to it and, you know, show proof that we, her and I are both proof that, yeah. you know, when your spouse supports you and takes, you know, you take a big risk. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Every business has risk. Doesn't matter yeah. whether it's buying education or flipping the house or whatever. You're going to take risk. But, you know, we both can tell you firsthand with spouse's support, it makes it way easier. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Ruby, it was good having you on. Appreciate yes. you for coming to Vegas. Guys, make sure you follow her. We're going to link to all of her description or all of her uh, socials down below. We'll catch you on the next podcast. Peace. Thanks for watching the Ryan Pineda Show. If you want to work with me, head over to ryanpineda.com. You can find my courses, coaching programs, and upcoming events. We also have free resources you can download, so head over to ryanpineda.com.